They were missing for nearly 20 hours, but two young boys were found safe today. The Red River Gorge will have a live report from Wolf County. A man has died in a deadly head-on collision on Palumbo Drive in Lexington. We'll have the details from the scene. And the latest on a deadly shooting on a college campus in Arizona. Tracking. Alerting. Protecting. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. Good afternoon to you, Amber Philpott and Jennifer Palumbo reporting. Two young boys who went missing in the Red River Gorge last night were found safe this afternoon. There had been a massive search for the two cousins. The boys, ages five and seven, disappeared from a campground in the Coomer Ridge area around six last night. Search and rescue officials tell us more than 100 people had been looking for them. Hillary Thornton has been tracking the search all day and is live with the latest in Wolf County. Hillary. Well, hey there. It is certainly a different mood out here than it was just a few hours ago as crews desperately searched for the young cousins, Michael and Adrian. However, the crews out here said they never lost up hope and they're thankful they found the two young boys before these storms settled in here at the gorge. It was a race against the clock with the time out in the Red River Gorge alone being the biggest concern crews had for the five year old and seven year old. More than 130 rescuers from multiple agencies searched on the ground and from the air, doing a grid search of more than 1,000 acres before finding the boys a few miles from the campsite. It was a physically and emotionally draining rescue for all the crews out here. They say at this point, it is hard to even put into words what it means to have safely reunited the boys with their families. The forest team service who found the boys say they called out and the boys responded and were even able to tell them the specific spot known as the mountain laurel where they were, re were resting. The first one to them says other than being hungry, the two boys were okay. Now the mother of the five-year-old Michael, Julia, is here with us. She says her son has a lot of outdoor experience and experience with camping. Julia, you said you remained hopeful through this whole thing. Talk to me about just what was going through your mind as the hours went on. Well, you can never stop being hopeful, you know, especially when we had so many good people just pouring in to help with the, the rescue effort. And, you know, and they always had a plan. They always had a, this is our next step. It was never like, okay, we're going to give up. It was always, you know, this is what we're going to do next. This is, you know, this is our plan. Um, and so, you know, you just have to, you just have to keep faith that, that God is with them, even though, though you can't be with them that whole time. And, you know, and Michael does, he, we go camping all the time. We started taking him camping when he was only about five months old. So he's used to being in the woods. He knows the, um, the trees. He knows, you know, basics of how to take care of himself in the woods. So I wasn't too worried about him as long as he didn't stumble off of a cliff or, you know, or injure himself in some way. And we saw Michael out here. He was smiling real big. What oh, was it yes. like when, when you were reunited with him? You know, you would think he would be, like, really afraid after all his ordeal and traumatized by it. But to him, it was just one great big adventure, and we're hoping he doesn't repeat it anytime <laughs> soon. Um, but he um, was in good spirits and no more dirty or scratched up than any other hike we end with him um, and um, hungry. He consumed quite a bit of food, but other than that, um, and no injuries or anything else. And Adrian was fine too. They're, they're both smiling, beaming ear to ear, posing for pet pictures with their rescuers, thanking everybody. They just were really, really happy to be back. All right. Well, thank you for taking some time out with us. Those two boys did get checked out here at the scene, and as you heard, they're going to be okay. Even shared in a pack of Oreos with the man who rescued them in the back of that ambulance. For now, live in Wolf County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. What a relief for those families. What brave little boys, yeah. and the importance of teaching them early what to do when you're out in the woods like that. So. Absolutely, and they're lucky too that they found them before nightfall tonight yes. and before all the rain moved mm -hmm. in there. The showers and thunderstorms have been moving across the area all day along with a cold front. Yeah, and that means we've got some cooler air for our weekend. Let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. So after this rain, great weekend, right? right? Exactly right. We said yesterday you had to get through a speed bump today, and then things are looking much better into our Saturday and Sunday. That speed bump, though, in the form of a nice little line of showers and thunderstorms that's out there. You see the general lighter rains back across parts of central Kentucky, but let's get into this cold front that is across southeastern Kentucky with that line of thunderstorms. We switched Defender into 3D mode, and you see how tall this little 
line of thunderstorms is getting here into parts of southeastern Kentucky, right along the Howe Rogers Parkway, into the Big Sandy Valley area, on top of the uh, Hazard area, and uh, into Knott County especially. You may get some pea-sized hail, some winds greater than 45 miles per hour with that line that continues to work its way toward the Virginia border. Back toward parts of south-central Kentucky. How about some thunder and lightning here across much of Laurel County, shaping up to be an ugly trip home on a Friday evening for a lot of the kiddos here in the Laurel County and parts of southern Kentucky. Thunder and lightning southwest of London, especially. We get into parts of northern McCreary County, south of the Mount Victory area, and over toward Monticello, where showers and thunderstorms continue to work their way on through. Farther north that we get, rain's lighting up just a little bit. Still enough light rain across the Lexington metro to likely create uh, some nasty travel conditions out there. And the rains eventually, later this evening, will shut off from northwest to southeast. When I come back in a little bit, we will focus on the better weather that is coming in for our Saturday and Sunday. I think you'll like the numbers that we're going to share with you. Chris, thank you. One person is dead after a violent crash this morning in Lexington. Two vehicles hit head on on Palumbo Drive between Codell Drive and Old Todd's Road. The impact caused one of the vehicles to catch fire. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain has more from the scene with police on how it happened. A tragedy on Palumbo Drive this morning as one man lost his life in a head on collision. He hit the truck out here head on. They pulled him out of the car. Kyle Judy was one of several people who tried to save the man who was driving the white SUV. He'd lost consciousness. We started giving CPR at that time. He came back, came back and uh, I mean, we kept him just awake, kept him alert during that time until the paramedics got here. The man was driving east on Palumbo Drive. Police say he first clipped a semi truck, swerved, and went back into the other lane, crashing head on into the flatbed truck. Police say at one point the SUV was engulfed in flames. An onlooker pulled the driver out of the SUV. Judy said people just wanted to do what they could to save the man's life. You just think about the person and their, their life at that time, because it is about life. In Lexington, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. The men in the flatbed truck and the semi driver did not suffer any injuries. Police are looking for the driver who caused some damage to a Lexington house. It happened about three this morning on Deer Lake Circle near Man of War and Buckhorn Drive. Three cars were parked in a driveway when a fourth car crashed into them. The impact pushed one of the cars into the bedroom of a house. A man was sleeping in that room at the time and said it was a startling way to wake up. Right away, I thought something hit hit the house, and I was, so when I jumped up, I couldn't get out because I was stuck. The door was stuck, and uh, but there was furniture all over the place, and and so finally, when I uh, somebody came downstairs, they popped the door open for me. No one inside the house was hurt. Firefighters say it is safe for the family to stay there. Police say the way that this crash happened is odd, and they say they can't say for sure that it was an accident. Police in Breathitt County are on the lookout for an escapee. The Sheriff's Department says Justin Talby escaped about 9.30 this morning. He was being transported to the courthouse when he escaped. Jackson City Police are searching for him. We'll have the latest on the search coming up on WKYT News at 5.30. President Obama flew to Roseburg, Oregon today to meet with family members of the victims of last week's shooting at a community college. This despite a handful of protesters who didn't want him there. The visit comes just hours after another deadly shooting on a college campus in Arizona. Diane Gallagher has the story. This is too much. This isn't true. Not at NAU. This couldn't happen. Just before 1.30 Friday morning, police say an 18-year-old freshman shot four students at Northern Arizona University after an argument in a parking lot. One of those students died. Now, the campus police chief called this an isolated incident, but... Well, the Arizona Board of Regents prohibits students, prohibits anyone to carry guns on campus. Uh, the Arizona law allows you to have a gun in your car, uh, in a locked compartment on campus. But that's where it has to stay. A second deadly shooting happened Friday at a student housing complex near Texas Southern University. That, as President Obama was on his way to Roseburg, Oregon, where eight days ago a 26 year old student shot and killed nine people at Umpqua Community College before killing himself. I don't think you should be here, to be honest with you. Some there protested the visit because of President Obama's call for gun control in the aftermath of recent mass shootings. This is a mental health issue. This is a young man that was screaming out for help, and 
slip through the cracks. Um, this is not a gun issue. This is not a political issue. But Andy Parker, whose daughter Allison was shot and killed on live TV in August, disagrees. Every, every country in the world has people with mental health, but we do have the market cornered on people with mental health issues that can have access to guns. That's the common denominator. The White House says the intention of the president's visit is simply to comfort survivors and victims' families. In Washington, Diane Gallagher reporting. In Texas, Houston police say one person is dead and another wounded after that shooting at Texas Southern University just a couple of hours ago. Houston police say a possible suspect has now been detained. Iron Man Louisville is Sunday, and today we learned the nearly 3,000 people who signed up for the competition will get to swim. There were concerns that an algae bloom in the Ohio River might have canceled the swim. The Great Ohio River Swim in Cincinnati had already been canceled this weekend because of the algae. State officials have been testing the water all week to make sure it's safe. Stay with us. They say they got the idea from a place in Las Vegas. Marshall Life Medicine is trying out a new way to keep you feeling good and staying healthy. Dean Stevens is out and about in Lexington to tell us about it. Hi, Dean. Good afternoon, guys. We are here at Marshall Lifestyle Medicine, where they are all about this thing called hydration therapy, virtual care, optimal health for you. And you said you're trying to keep folks out of the doctor's office, Absolutely. so to speak, kind of right. John Mullins is with us. How did you come up with this concept? Well, as an ER doctor, me and my partner were seeing patients for the last 20 years for people that just hadn't taken care of themselves. So we came up with an idea of maybe trying to keep people healthy rather than wait until they get sick and then they show up in the emergency room at their doctor's office with some sort of chronic illness. A lot of people avoid going to the doctor's office. They just don't want to go. There's this thing called virtual care that you guys Absolutely. are doing. What is this? Well, the virtual care concept came about after an experience that I had going to the doctor's office for a routine matter that took three hours of my life. Our virtual care technology allows us to see patients for acute care, follow-up visits in five minutes. It's, a, it's efficient for the patient, it's time efficient for the doctor, and it's, it's cost effective. And so it's meant to really enhance the patient-doctor experience. And in that, is that something that they come in here for? No, the patient can call us from anywhere. They can be on the other side of the world and have their doctor follow-up visit with us. Excellent. It makes it a little easier on folks. Absolutely. Okay. Also, we want to mention some of the other things you guys are offering. When Absolutely. you say optimal care, yeah. what all's happening here? Well, in optimal health, we, take, we go about taking care of the patients kind of in a holistic manner. We try to balance their hormones. We try to balance their weight. We try to make sure that everything is working at an optimal level so that you kind of continue to age in a more graceful manner. Um, we also offer a full aesthetic line. We have a full-time plastic surgeon named Dr. Kristen Jones, and we're doing or delivering aesthetic services in a pain-free and anxiety-free fashion, something a lot of people do not do. So it's all about the experience for, for the patients when they come here. And you have that thing called hydration therapy that Ray was just showing. I love that. Absolutely. I think a lot of people will need that after a UK football <laughs> game, a day, day at the Breeders' Cup, etc. It works. It's effective. And I tell you, if you can see from the place in there, it's very relaxing and cozy. Your place is beautiful. Uh, how can folks get more info? What's your website? Our website is www.marshallifestylemedicine.com, or they can simply call our office, which I don't have the number in front of me. <laughs> but it's okay. We'll put it on the screen for folks. Check out Marshall Lifestyle Medicine. Uh, optimal health for you. It's a very cool place. Just opened yesterday. Located War Admiral here in Hamburg. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about. Back to you guys. All right, we've had some great weather, but we don't want you to panic just yet. This is just a minor bump, and then we're going to have some more great weather this weekend, sounds like. That's right, Chris. We just need to get through this rain, and then it's going to be a beautiful weekend. Yeah, it's speed bump. That's what we called it yesterday, and that's pretty much what we're talking about today. Uh, some of those thunderstorms, though, in the parts of Madison County, putting down enough winds to knock a few trees down. We've had some hail reports. Look at our time lapse from Madison County here and watch this storm rolling on in here. And we continue with some lighter rains through the course of the afternoon now. So, wet roads across most of Madison County. That's the I 75 uh, cam that is showing up now. And as we go through the rest of the evening, the rain will focus more on areas uh, to the south and southeast of the Lexington Metro. Still, though, parts of southeastern Kentucky with some thunder and lightning rocking and rolling here from Pikeville through Hazard down into parts of Manchester, London, Corbin, Williamsburg. And right on top of the London area now, we have wet, wet conditions here across the I 75 corridor into parts of south central Kentucky. And that will begin to wane or weaken as we go through the next hour or two. Still, though, if you're heading out to a high school football game this evening, uh, take the poncho because we'll have some drizzle and some light showers that will continue as cooler winds 
began to blow in. We'll come back in a few minutes and talk about some new numbers on the hour by hour forecast for that weekend, which does continue to look pretty darn good, ladies. We like the sound of that, Chris. Thank you. A major traffic jam and a surprise while doing laundry. It's the video that will have you talking. Take a look at this. All right, for all of you who thought traffic for the Luke Bryan concert in Lexington was bad, check out this video. A 50 lane traffic jam in Beijing, China, had drivers backed up for more than a week. It came at the end of a week long Chinese national holiday. It's estimated 750 million people were traveling for the holidays. That's double the entire U.S. population. And every car had to pass through a toll. Then the road goes down to only 20 lanes. Cars were reportedly backed up for 10 years. Days. I can't imagine sitting in traffic for that I, no, long. I don't even want to think about it. All right, in this case, Elvis isn't the king of rock and roll. He's a king cobra snake, and Elvis is now back. A woman in the Orlando area heard hissing coming from under the dryer in her garage. The sound was from a king cobra snake that had been missing for more than a month. Animal control officers captured the 10 foot long serpent and returned it to its owner, who lives about a half a mile from where it was found. That is not one of the many things you want to find under your dryer. No, this is the week of the snake, yes, it seems like. It is. <laughs> All right, on that note, please stick with us. Here's what we're working on for you now at 5 o'clock.